What's up and welcome to the Beyond <laughs> Sundays podcast. My name is Brett Stewart. I am the host and I'm laughing right now because one of my guests today, um, this is his first time doing this and he was, I guess, taken back by how loud of an intro Mesmerized. that was. Mesmerized. We have today the bald beauty and the <laughs> oh lucky librarian. Gosh. So <laughs> we've got Ashley Kirshner and Eddie Smith. <laughs> Eddie Smith is back with us. Woo-hoo. Which one is which? <laughs> Just I, Well, considering you one know, of you has a full head of hair. It's audio, not video. That's so, true. Right. Oh, but we'll put your pictures on the, uh, <laughs> on the, the bald, album art. I'll be the bald librarian. <laughs> <laughs> the bald librarian. And then the lucky beauty. <laughs> Anyways, I'll be the lucky beauty. Uh, so I'm excited today uh, for this conversation. It's actually going to be a two-part uh, conversation. I will be out next week. I am going to be on sabbatical up in Utah in Zion National Forest. So I'm really excited about that. So this is going to be a two-part episode. A lot. Yeah. He yeah. didn't mention that before we did this. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. No, um, he also didn't offer to take us with him. That's... Yes. That's you a- know what? We'll get into that later in the right. discussion. Sure. Yeah, yeah okay. we'll get into that into the discussion. We'll get to that. Anyways, but Ashley Kirshner is um, a worship pastor and now a groups pastor on staff here at Beltway. And Eddie Smith, as you know, is an elder, is a librarian, and... Um, all around good guy. All yes. around good guy. Great guy. Um, great guy. But I, I wanted to bring Eddie back on and also bring Kirshner into this. Um, we're going to talk about burnout. And I know that on Eddie's podcast, um, we referenced it a little bit, but we just kind of want to go deeper into that unfolded because that's something that a lot of people face, and I feel like we're facing it more frequently, and we don't really know what to do with it other than try harder or switch you know, jobs, careers, something, life scenarios, hoping that that resolves. And so, um, Eddie, I guess I I know you brought more stuff to this conversation than I did, and I know (laughs) that you're going to share some specifically from uh, some moments and times in your life where you faced burnout. Um, But we talked about this at lunch a couple weeks ago, so let's just dive into it. Yeah, that's great. Well, uh, we'll start with sort of talking about what burnout is, and uh, and then we'll talk about how you identify whether or not you are burnt out or burning out, and then <clears throat> then maybe we'll talk about some things you can do to recover from it or um, uh, begin to restore yourself. So th- to start off with, though, I mean, we all have periods in our life when we feel exhausted, um, we start to get cynical, um, and we feel... Yeah, ineff- surely no one in this room has ever been <laughs> cynical. <laughs> I was like, or, Eddie, or why, ineffective. Are you, why are you uh, describing me right now? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> we, that's why you're here, Ashley. And so those are I was three, like, yeah, <laughs> this is an intervention. Well, Eddie, right. Eddie's here to help people right. out of burnout. And right. I'm like, why am I here? Oh, oh. There we, go. we need a guinea pig. Exhibit A. Uh, exhibit <laughs> Ashley. Um, yeah. We all feel exhausted. We all feel cynical. We all feel ineffective at times, at various times, and at various levels. Um, but but sort of living and working day in and day out from a place like that is really what creates burnout, what causes burnout. Uh, and so hopefully in this talk, we're going to, we're going to talk through how you can identify that in yourself, how you can begin to, um, replenish and really start to re-engage, um, back in the fullness of life. So, um, so let's start with what is burnout? Um, that's a great question, Brett. It's funny. You should ask. So, um, Man, I'm there, full of great questions. Right there now. is a uh, a story in First Kings chapter 19, story of Elijah who uh, had just won a great victory over 850 false prophets. Um, it's a big victory <laughs> at, at Mar- Mount Carmel, and then he is his life is threatened, and he runs for his life. And then during that process, he becomes exhausted. He gets really depressed. In fact, at one point, he just wants to die. In fact, his prayer is. I've had enough, Lord, take my life. And I have maybe not prayed the back half of that in my life, but I've certainly prayed the front half of that yes. Yes. plenty of times in my life. Of I've had enough, Lord. Uh, and so uh, he lays down under a bush to die, and he falls asleep 
and in there is a beautiful story of the power of a nap, which we'll come back to. But um, <laughs> right. um, uh, so what he's what he, what is happening to Elijah is burnout. What we would call today burnout. He's exhausted. He's depressed. He's in the midst of success. In the midst of huge success, yes. great mm-hmm. victory. Yeah, um, enough that he doesn't want to go on, and like not ineffectiveness. Right. But right. Yeah, and accomplishing so, great things. Absolutely. And so that's a great example of this condition that we're going to talk about and we're going to label it as burnout has been around a long, long time. So this is not new to modern life. Mm-hmm. This is not yeah. new to humanity. What is new to humanity is the culture that really enhances it for us, uh, enhances this very negative experience. So uh, and we'll talk more about that. But he is exper- Elijah has experienced what we would call today burnout. He's emotionally drained, he's mentally fatigued, he's physically exhausted, and he's spiritually dry. (laughs) And and all three of us are nodding our heads. You can't see it on on the audio, (laughs) but we're all nodding our heads on every one of those. Emotionally drained, mentally fatigued, physically exhausted, and just spiritually empty or spiritually dry. Um, um, and the reason for that is at the root of burnout is you can't give away what you don't have. Mm-hmm. And especially in minister, ministerial roles um, in church life where we are continually giving out, um, if you're empty on the inside, you're given out of nothingness. Mm-hmm. And so um, uh, just part of my story, it was al- almost a year ago to this month, it was last April, um, I I really kind of hit the wall, uh, and I experienced what I would call today, I burnt out. Uh, and at the time, it was literally burnout like a light bulb. Like, one day I was on, and the next day <laughs> I was done. And um, and I actually had physical components to that. I hurt my back. I couldn't get out of bed for three weeks. I had to cancel everything. Um, and uh, that was – it was a, kind of a crazy time. I, uh, projects at work were imploding. Um, just before that happened, um, had some personal, uh, uh, things going on in my life that were, uh, very tense emotionally, uh, that I wasn't processing well. I had some friends die, some grieving that I wasn't processing. Um, I run a, as we talked last time on the podcast, I have a side business where I do, um, consulting and, and, and that business had gone to zero during COVID and it was just starting to come back a year ago and it was mm-hmm. ramping up and I was really excited, but I was really exhausted because it was, I was basically having to build the business all over again. Yeah. And, and in the midst of all of that, which had been cooking a long time, right. um, I, I reached this point where I, I just hit a wall and I just, like Elijah, I just said, I've had enough, Lord. And it was the, the last sort of, no pun intended, the straw that broke the eddy back was yeah. uh, was <laughs> my back, right? Yep. And I couldn't I couldn't get out of bed for a couple of weeks, and um, and I I didn't know even how to process that or even how what was happening to me. I know I had this physical thing going on that was problematic, um, and so you know doctors and chiropractors and MRIs and all kinds of things, um. But I had this kind of tar ball of other stuff going on inside me that I really couldn't couldn't process. We had, you know, there were there were people here um, um, in in our church that we had prayed for fervently for healing and for recovery, and that those things didn't unfold the way that I had wanted them to, and that was emotionally weighty and spiritually weighty, and and um, and I just kind of folded in on myself. Um, and, um, uh, and, you know, I think for a number of months, I slapped a happy face on it and went to work every day oh, and, yes. you know, pretended and, uh, and because culturally, you know, you're a high capacity person, success is doing lots of stuff and, and, and achieving all these great things. And no one ever wants to talk about well, how are you really doing on the inside? Yeah. Right? We, we know, we all know how that feels. And well, yeah, like no one slowing down for a moment to talk about that is right. abnormal in our society. Right, right. So culturally, no, this it's abnormal. It's not celebrated. Exhaustion is celebrated. Right. Like work harder. Right. Going well, people, pedal to the metal. People would ask me, 
hey, how are you doing? And I would say, oh man, I am so busy. And and you, it's almost a lauding of, yeah, yes. well, that you must be doing great because you're busy. Yes. Significance uh, equals <laughs> right. busyness. Right, and I, I have learned over this last year uh, that, A, that's a terrible answer. So when, <laughs> when I ask someone else, hey, how are you doing? And they respond, uh, oh, I'm so busy. And then you set an appointment like, with them. <laughs> right, yeah, like, well, <laughs> Pause, hey. <laughs> hit pause, yeah. let's unpack that, because yes. that's not a good thing. Um, um, and um, busyness is not righteousness, so there's that. <laughs> um, and so I... I think that's the title right there. Uh, <laughs> and so, interestingly, uh, a couple of... So this is the way the Lord works, right? A couple of just really amazing coincidences. There are no coincidences, but there are a couple of events that happened during that same time frame. One was I came to a, a group's training day that we had here at Beltway, um, uh, and we had some breakout sessions. And in one of those breakout sessions, Melissa Key, who works here at the church, uh, did a session on burnout. Yeah, ministry burnout. Right. And, um, and I, was, I was wearing the elder hat, so I was sort of popping in and out of every session, kind of checking on things. And I caught a yeah, little... Yeah, surely you don't need to sit in I don't on these. Just, in. just check and right. oversee. I'm, you you know, got time I'm, for that? I'm praying for all these other people who are sitting I'm in the burnout overseer. session, but I don't need to be in there. And so I popped in on her session, caught a little bit of what uh, she was saying, and and <laughs> that thing was an arrow right in me. And But I was still wearing the elder hat, so I had to go check out all the other sessions, pop my head in, check, make sure everything was kosher and doing well. And, um, and then at the end of that breakout session, there was a second set of breakout sessions, which were all the same sessions, just you could go to a different one. Mm-hmm. And, but I had already popped in on every one of them. And so I asked the Lord, well, which one would you like me to go to? And he said, go back and sit in that burnout session. And so I quietly went back to the burnout session. I sat at the very back of the room. And as, as Mel described burnout and talked about things that we're going to talk about today, I just came unglued. Mm-hmm. I just came unglued. I was, I was literally bawling at the back of the room. Because I, I now had language for what was happening in me that I couldn't articulate yep. before. Yeah. And... Um, and so she described, she shared uh, a, a book that she had encountered uh, by Carrie Newoff uh, called Didn't See It Coming. And the book is a leadership book, and he talks about seven or eight or nine things that leaders encounter in their leadership um, that you, you, you're never really looking out for, but that happened to you on occasion. And burnout, there was a chapter on burnout. Uh, and she was focused on that. And so uh, she read through his 11 checklists, uh, his 11 item checklist of mm-hmm. oh, wow. ways to recognize burnout. So, uh, faith, 11 out of 11? Faith, <laughs> 11 I had 11 out of 11. And wow. so faithful listeners, uh, ding, 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 ding. Uh, we're going to, we're going to just run down the checklist <laughs> really quick. Um, Prepare yourself for conviction. <laughs> right. Make, make some mental notes. So the, if you're driving, pull over. <laughs> right. Right. You might be bawling uh, by the end of this. So the first one was your passion fades. Hmm. That you just don't, you don't feel as much motivation as you used to, um, and and by passion there, I'm just you know about hey I, I like doing what I'm doing I you know your passion fades. Next one, you no longer feel highs and lows, so everything you just start to get numb. Mm. Um, you really can't celebrate when other people are celebrating. You can't mourn when other people are mourning. You, you just kind of numb to it all. Mm-hmm. Check. Um, you are disproportionately emotional. So you have disproportionately emotional responses to things. Um, uh, little things set off your anger. Um, um, you know, commercials make you cry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> things like that where you're just, uh, why am I responding so strongly to something that's so seemingly uh, I think four innocent, or five in, of in, these in, is enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we've only made it to um, three, so... Um, you know, if if the item on a one to ten scale is a three, whatever it was that happened, mm-hmm. you know, you should respond at a three level, not at a ten level, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're reacting at an eleven level oh, to yes. something that was it a should three, be a three level, yep. right? That uh, warning sign, That's right? Good. Now, none of these in and of themselves are warning signs necessarily of burnout, but collectively, collectively, yeah. 
Uh, next one. Everybody drains you, even people that you like, even friends, family, people that you know love you and support you, and they just s- feels like everybody sucks away your energy. Mm-hmm. I will say, as an extreme extrovert, there are times where I get to a place when I I am drained by people yep. or no longer wanting to be around people. Yeah. For me, that's one of my indicators. It's a flag of like, whoa, right. something's off. I need to step back. And I know that's not for, you know, introverts, uh, but it, it's it's odd when an extrovert who is recharged and fueled by people in relationships finds like, I just don't want to be around anybody. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the way that read for me was um, it seemed like, Everybody in the world wanted something from me. Yes, yes. that's it. Take, take, yep. take. Right. Even Everyone's though, you taking know, from yeah, me. You could call me and say, hey, hey, let's go to lunch. And yeah. my first thought I was- I want to buy you lunch. Right. My first thought was, what do you want from me? Yeah, you're talking to Brett, right? No, I'm talking, <laughs> I'm talking to you. He's looking at you. <laughs> and so everybody drains you. Um, you find yourself becoming increasingly cynical, which we've already laughed about, but- um, Yes. Um, uh, you know- when I when I first encountered that one on the checklist, my my internal response was, ha, I'm not cynical. Yeah. C- cynicisms <laughs> to the comment about cynicism. Right. I was cynical about the comment about cynicism. Okay. Um, nothing satisfies you. Mm, yeah. Like you just feel dissatisfied all the time. You feel discontented all the time. Discontented at work. Discontented at home. Discontented while having fun discontented with food, with you name it, you could rest and feel discontented. Yep. And yeah. it's like everything and every practice um, that used to be meaningful to you is no longer so. Mm. You can't think straight. And if you don't understand what I mean by you can't think straight, then you're probably burning out. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was a joke, Ashley. Yes. Okay. Well. Sometimes Eddie puts in these little zingers. <laughs> yeah. Um, you find your productivity dropping, like you have a crazy busy day and at the end of the day, you're like, well, what did I actually get done? Hmm. And I just, I seem like this whole day was just flustered and I don't, I can't, I didn't actually accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. And when you have the capability to block out and get some things accomplished, you're still not accomplishing anything. You just, your mind drifts off. You, you find yourself self-medicating. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean with drugs and alcohol. My self-medication was come home at the end of the day and binge watch Netflix until I fell asleep. Right? Yep. Just, I'm, I'm just turning it off. Um, and it was a relief, but relief is not the same as restoration. Mm. Temporary. Right, right. Just, you're, just, you're just switching it off. Yep. And that's what self-medicating is all about, whether it's drugs or alcohol or food or you name it. It's about, hey, I'm just going to, you know, switch off the pain I'm feeling just for a little while, knowing that it's going to come back. But yes. for this little window, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just turn it off. Mm. Um, this one really hit home with me is I, I, didn't, I didn't laugh anymore. And humor is one of my core values. And so for me not to – even like friends and family were like, hey, you don't seem to be as joyous yes. as you used to be. I, yeah, well – It's because I'm coming unglued on the inside. Yeah, right? um, yeah I'm just yeah. real busy. Right, I'm just super busy. Sorry, a lot on my mind. Head down, working hard, right. A lot on my mind. It's like I can't think straight. Yep. And then the surefire warning sign that you might be burning out is uh, sleep or rest and time off don't refuel you. So if you like take a vacation and it's you come back after vacation and you're still like you're 10 minutes back at work and you already feel that same feeling again or, you know, how that read for me was every Sunday morning before church. I'd start stressing about work on Monday. Hmm. And I would carry that stress all day long, all day on Sunday. Well, that's Man. that's half the weekend yeah. that I should be resting. I'm stressing about work the next day. Um, and so I wasn't getting refueled even in the resting. Yep. So yeah. 11 oh, for 11. Oh, 11 for 11. That's high score, baby, right <laughs> there. 11 for 11. Looking back, as, you're, as you are reading that list, I can see this season I went through where I can name a specific time. And it's good that we're doing a podcast of when I cry, no one will see it. I love it. I love that. But I can see the progression of, I started out with two or three of those symptoms, but by the time I sat in Eddie's office, the Eddie Smith's office, 
I was at 11 out of 11. By the time your light bulb went out. I, I love that illustration. I didn't mean to cut you off, but like well, you did. The, <laughs> but well, I saw that you were. I thought you just needed to cry, so I thought I would take over. Uh, I'll give you, if you need a moment. You yeah, need a moment. but that illustration of like your your light is burning until it's not, and so like a few of these things. Oh yeah, yep. I'm aware. I'll just keep pressing. I'll just keep whatever, yep. and then out of nowhere, it seems like it it hits, it snaps, it, yep. it breaks. Yeah. Yep. So in truth. Burnout really doesn't work like that. Burnout is not a binary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Burnout is not, I was fine, and then I was burnt out. Yeah. Burnout is a spectrum. So you think of it like autism. You, you move along the spectrum, uh, and rather than to think of it as a light bulb, think of it as a, a spectrum of motion. And I'll talk more about that in a second. So when I burnt out, of course, uh, Carrie Newoff's recommendation is if you checked eight or more of those off the list of 11, and that was 11 for 11, I was like, yeah, high score. Oh. Um, you need professional help immediately. Uh, and so I took his advice. Good. Shockingly, I actually did what a book told me to do. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I, I made an appointment that day, uh, and, and culturally here in Abilene, it's really challenging to get a counseling appointment right yeah. away because there's a, like an eight week backlog. And, but I, I did what I never do. I pulled the elder Trump card and I pulled some strings and got in with somebody that afternoon. Wow. Um, um, because that same day that I encountered all of this uh, and was reading this book and I actually sat down and went through the checklist myself and was like, Oh my gosh, I'm bad off. That's the day my back started hurting. Hmm. And so that afternoon, I had my first counseling session. The next day, I had my first doctor appointment with, you know, a chiropractor and all that. I, like, it just, it escalated so quickly. Um, and they were, I knew in my head that they were all interconnected, that this mm -hmm. wasn't just a physical thing that was happening to me, that there was something, you know, this, it wasn't just a giant emotional tar ball that I wasn't unpacking well. And, uh, and in the process of recovery, I... Uh, I, be, I encountered a devotional that I mentioned in our last mm -hmm. podcast, and I'll, I'll hit it again, but it, it's called Emotionally Healthy Spirituality Day by Day. It's a 40-day devotional. It's very simple, and that's what I needed. I needed, I was burnt out. I didn't need, here's 20 things to go do. Yes. I needed five minutes twice a day doing nothing but this one thing. And so, and it's a five-minute devotional twice a day, and you just, you read the thing. It's a, Short little reading. Uh, this starts with one minute of silence, which I realized I needed more margin yeah. in my life. You read the little brief uh, scripture verse, you read the little brief devotional, and then you have end with another minute of silence. And um, in that, I encountered this quote from author, uh, his name is Parker Palmer. Um, but listen to this. This was what blew me away when I recognized, that, okay, I already knew I checked all the 11 boxes of burnout. <laughs> But then I encountered this and I began to realize where it was coming from. Um, Parker Palmer says this, When I give you something I do not possess, I give a false and dangerous gift. A gift that looks like love, but is, in reality, loveless. A gift given more from my need to prove myself than from someone else's need to be cared for. Mm. And one sign that I'm violating my own nature in, in the name of that no, false nobility is a condition called burnout. And though usually regarded as the result of trying to give too much, burnout, in my experience, Parker Palmer says, and also in my experience, Eddie Smith's experience, burnout results from trying to give what I do not possess. Hmm. It's, it's the ultimate in giving too little. It's... Burnout is a state of emptiness, to be sure, but it doesn't result from giving all I have. It merely reveals the nothingness from which I was giving in the first place. Um, and that really hit home with me because uh, I'm a huge fan and have been for years of a book called The Power of Full Engagement, uh, which is really about how to sort of live life to the maximum capacity and and... Uh, and I think we talked about replenishment cycles and things that yep. are in our last podcast. And, and that, um, the imagery in that book is, you know, how do you sort of live life to this maximum 
mm-hmm. place, you know, like you're a NASCAR racer, you know, except if you don't stop into the pit on schedule, mm-hmm. y- you risk blowing an engine or yes. burning it through a tire or, and then it's crash burn. There's no way you're in that race anymore. Yep. Right. And so, um, um, and so that's where really where my story started to begin to become clear that I was, I was burnt out and I really had been burnt out a lot longer than it seemed. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, with the help of some professional counseling, which I'm a huge fan of, um, I'm, we've I, talked about multiple times. On I'm a the huge podcast. fan of professional help in the first place, right? If you're, if your plumbing breaks, you call a licensed plumber. If your car breaks, <laughs> right. you take it to a certified if you're mechanic. Physically sick, you go to the doctor. You go to if the you're doctor. mentally or emotionally sick, yeah. what should we do? Like when, when I was broken, I went to people who knew how to fix me. Uh, and I can tell you in one session, he put his finger right where yep. the issue was. And yeah. we've spent a year working on that and it's really been tremendous. It's great. Um, um, so so what is burnout? Is it from doing too much? Is it from being exhausted? Is it some kind of nervous breakdown is what we would have called it when I was a kid? Um, is it just, I've lost my desire. So this year, a new publication that came out, a book that's been really fascinating for me to read, um, is called the end of burnout. Um, the author's name is, um, uh, Malesic, Jonathan Malesic, the end of burnout. Um, and he's a university professor. He's a th- theology professor who burnt out. And after he burnt out and quit his job, he decided to apply his academic prowess to just understanding what was happening to him. And he wrote this book. Um, and it's been tremendous in my understanding. I wasn't ready at the point of burning out to read it cause it's a little heavy academic, but, um, um, but now a year later, I'm, processing through this book and recognizing that the things he's saying are so profoundly true. So for example, um, um, burnout is rooted in an imbalance between our expectations and our reality. Mm -hmm. So when you burn out at work, it's because there's a gap between your ideals of what you think work is or should be or would be or will be and the reality of our, just our jobs. Um, that's burnout's origin point. Um, Hmm. and, and, um, we burn out when what we actually do fails to align with what we hoped Hmm. that work would be like. Oh, wow. And, um, and this is, uh, this is cultural. It's not just internal. It's not just personal. Like there is a cultural expectation that work is going to be one way. And, and yeah. there is a cultural uh, expectation that we think about work being another way. And um, yeah, it's profound. When, when you said what you just said and say it again after I make this comment, but it seems like it then stirs the questioning of purpose. Absolutely. And we're all, you know, one of the biggest things everyone is asking is, why am I here? What's my purpose? And and we talked about that the last time that we had you, um, you know, episode 29 and episode 30, discovering and living out your purpose, that nothing in your life and in your journey is wasted. But a- as you said that, it just, it, it it in that moment, it made me question like that scenario of like, man, like, did I miss out on my purpose? Am I not aligned with oh. my purpose? So say that, say that yeah, again. Yeah, so... Uh, burnout is rooted in the gap that exists between our ideals of our work and the reality of our work. Mm -hmm. And the, the illustration he uses in the book is if you think of yourself as standing on a pair of stilts. Okay. And so one stilt is your ideals of work. The other stilt is the reality of work. And if those two are not aligned in parallel, you're going to have a hard time staying up yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you do stay up, you're going to be you, you, exhausted you, because you're of the going to be exhausted <laughs> because the process of holding those two aligned uh, drains you. Um, and or, then it's right. going to lead to you being so drained that you right. can't stay up right. anymore. Yeah, and then you fall and break your back like I did. Okay, so <laughs> um, yeah, that process drains us. And, and remember. Burnout comes not from doing too much, but from doing what you're doing from a place of emptiness, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when the process itself is draining you, 
and you were already empty to begin with, you can see how quickly this becomes a cultural phenomenon, right? Yeah. In a in a post pandemic world where we're all sort of feeling secondary trauma of just the world around yep. us and um, uh, world events and so forth. So he describes burnout not as a light bulb, not as a as a condition of an on off condition, but as a spectrum. Um, so think of it like autism. You could yeah. be anywhere on the spectrum. But um, we usually think of it, we identi- if we're not being mindful, we identify it when the light bulb goes off. Yes, but little- we, we, tend to, we tend to talk about it culturally when we're already toast, too when late. the right. toast is already it's, burnt. Well, right, it, yeah. it makes me, and <laughs> yeah. come back to it, obviously, but it makes me think even of you know what they say about dehydration. Like No one knows that they're being dehydrated until they hit and experience the effects right. of yep. dehydration. And you think, oh, I can go a little longer. I can go right. a little longer until you can't. Right. And at some point in dehydration, you just stop being thirsty. Yeah. And then you go mad, (laughs) right? Because your brain stops working right and your electrolytes are all screwy. And yes, so, but by the time you've gotten to that point, you've been dehydrated a long time, Mm -hmm. right? And that's the way burnout really is, is the spectrum. And he describes the spectrum as having three distinct dimensions. And these will sound very familiar to any of us who have ever been (laughs) burnt out or are burning out. The first is, the first dimension of burnout is, is exhaustion. You're just drained. You're constantly drained. You're emotionally drained. You're physically exhausted. You're mentally tired. All those things we talked about at the very beginning, right? That, that's one dimension. And you can be exhausted without being burnt out. You could, you know, you could have a hard project and you just finished it and it was, you know, woohoo, success. And you take a day off and you come back and you feel better, right? Yep. You can address ex- exhaustion in that way. Exhaustion is addressed with rest. Yeah. But when rest, rest doesn't work in but, burnout. <laughs> but when rest doesn't get it done, then you know you have yes. some of the other two dimensions or the other uh, dimensions that are at play here. So the other one of the other dimensions is cynicism. And we laughed about that because, um, like, who's cynical? <laughs> I'm not cynical. Um, can we drop names here? Or is yeah. This, yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> the question is who's not cynical? Who's not cynical? Um, and and really, cynicism really boils down, especially in our world, in, in sort of ministry world, cynicism really boils down to you see people as problems yeah, rather than seeing them as people mm-hmm. you're meant to help. And, it sh- and let's go a little gospel on this. That should identify that there is... There is a place of love lacking in your life. Either right. probably you receiving love from God and from others, and because of what you don't have, you're not able to give it. And so yeah, when it goes people back to the emptiness of yeah yeah when people become problems, then that should indicate I'm feeling unloved right right now, or I need to un I must feel unloved. I can't identify it, but let me evaluate. Let me assess. So. I, we, I want to get to the third dimension of that and talk more about the cynicism, but I, I have this sticky note on my bathroom mirror that for me and my personality, um, when I'm operating out of weakness or insecurity or um, lack of rest, I, I have these things written out, uh, Some it, things like bitterness, impatient, um, black and white, perfectionistic, um, you know, requires uh, a big, a big intro or a big exit. These things that either I find myself applying to other people or that I start needing more and more and more. I have that in front of me on my mirror, and my wife actually wrote the sticky note for me. Um, but, but those kind of things, it's like okay, those should be indicators that I'm lacking something because now I don't. I'm not giving it to others, which means I don't have it for myself. Right. And that's a problem. Right. And that the root of cynicism is all about sort of separating yourself from others. Right. So it's all it all boils down to sort of depersonalization. So if the work I'm doing, if I find myself slipping into the depersonalization and I'm focused all on, you know, expense reports and whatever, you know, just paperwork. And it's a way of sort of stepping back from the impact that my work actually does or accomplishes. The more depersonalizing that process is, 
the easier it is to be cynical. And so you think about that in the context of, think about that in the context of like politics. The more you can dehumanize the other side, mm-hmm. the easier it is yeah. to demonize the yep. other side, right? Yeah. And so um, that's where cynicism, that's where cynicism takes root. And so um, when you start to see other people as problems, it's it's easy to or easier to forget that they're people who also need love and right, yeah. and, and that we are called to be agents of love and and so so that's that's the other dimension. You can be anywhere on the spectrum in that dimension. Oh. You can be anywhere on the spectrum in the exhaustion dimension. You can be anywhere on the spectrum in the cynicism direction. And the third dimension is about ineffectiveness. Um, when you just feel like your work isn't accomplishing anything. Uh, and you can be anywhere on that spectrum in that dimension. And, mm-hmm. um, and that could be everything from, man, this was a frustrating day and I just, you know, couldn't get any traction and nothing's happening to, I have wasted my life in this dead end job <laughs> and, and it's going nowhere and I'm not happy and my boss isn't happy and my yep. family's not happy and, I could make more money folding burritos at Chipotle. Not that that's a bad yeah, career. It no. might be a great career. I don't know. It's not the one I have. But um, um, but when it's, you feel so ineffective that um, that it begins to impact how you perceive yourself. Um, yeah. And it gets worse. For me, the season I went through that I'm out of, getting out of. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> nice. Amen. Really, yeah. it was... It was so tied to that question of what, who I am, my right. destiny, that, man, once that gets cloudy, yeah. it just, everything, because everything from life flows from that walking into what you're called to do, who you are. But once that gets foggy with burnout, you start questioning that, then it trickled into, Lord, are you as real as you say you are? You just, it just spiraled. Yep. Yeah. And it's, yep. it's so tied to destiny. And the enemy knows that. And so yeah. he just sure. keeps in this cycle yeah. of... It's interesting as we, I don't know, maybe this is, uh, I, I wrote this down. As we're talking, I wrote down, is it depression or burnout? Because right, yes. right now, there is, there is mental health awareness right now is great. It, it is more prevalent and more, we're more aware of it than we ever have been. But sometimes we, we got to be careful with labels too. And I'm not downplaying the depression or the significance of depression. It's a real thing and it affects a lot of people. But a lot of what we're talking about when I, when I'm meeting with friends or, or other people and they're describing what they are calling depression, it sounds like burnout. Mm. So uh, those I, 11 points, I would, I would, I mean, I'm not a mental health person, but, uh, <laughs> I, I now have some mental health that I didn't have before. And I would tell you in my experience, so I'll just speak entirely for myself, yeah. but from my experience, depression was the symptom, mm. not the cause. And it's easy to treat the symptom. Yeah. Especially culturally because, well, we can write you a script for that and you'll feel better. Um, but that's not addressing the disease. It's just addressing the symptom. Mm -hmm. Now, health and getting back to health required me to address both. And and so I had to contend with the depression, which was the manifestation of the squelched grief and emotional things I wasn't healthily processing and, um, you know, career things that weren't going the way, my mismatched expectations and all the, all the stuff we've talked about was sort of spilling out of me as, depression, but I even in the early stages, I couldn't even have told you that. Mm. I don't think anybody who knew me and loved me could say that that was what was happening. Fortunately, I had some medical people in my life who were like, oh yeah, I recognize that. You know, they have, they have evaluative tools to help them mm-hmm. determine that in me, which was helpful. Um, but, uh, and so I wouldn't say they're two separate things. I think they're connected. There's lots, right. the lots of reasons why you could be depressed or have depression, but certainly it is a symptom of this particular yeah. um, condition, especially when you start to move in this in the dimension of ineffectiveness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that ties directly with, well, my purpose. And this is where it gets really tangled with identity mm-hmm. and where we get really culturally impacted. Um, because obviously from that story of Elijah, 
burnout's been around for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> like biblically, yeah. that it was like 600 BC or something, right? Um, the, the, the cultural uh, aspect of it, though, is much more amplified in our modern world than it ever was in the ancient times. And so here's how sort of that read for me, right? Um, we are told culturally, find work that you love doing. Well, I did that, and 25 years later, I didn't really love it anymore. We're going to go ahead and stop the conversation right there to end out today's episode, leaving you on a cliffhanger so that you have to come back next week to hear part two of this conversation as we finish out this discussion with Eddie Smith and Ashley Kirshner. Again, hope that you have enjoyed the conversation so far. And for real, though, come finish out how the rest of this conversation ends. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be enlightening. And we hope that it equips you to be able to take your next steps into all that Jesus has for you. We hope you have a great week. Be blessed. And remember, God is moving in your life beyond Sundays.